Welcome back to For Your Child's Health. Joining us today, Dr. Bert Lubin and Dr. Julie Saba. And remember any advice we give you today. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to check with your own physician. Dr. Saba, we've made much of this in her Hollywood, and I'm, I, I wasn't gonna mention this, but I do want to, aside from all the work that you're doing, you're also a very accomplished jazz musician. Okay, now, now, now I put you on the spot. <laughs> okay, um, we want to talk about, and we teased it before <clears throat> the break, about some of the, the diseases that are affecting children, but you had mentioned something about your philosophy. Doctor, explain to me about what lifespan research is. So we're, we pride ourselves in the fact that we are studying diseases throughout the lifespan. Uh, pediatrics is the place where diseases start. If you could pick up who's susceptible to atherosclerosis, if you could determine a diet during pregnancy that makes the fetus less susceptible to diabetes, obesity, or cardiovascular disease, if you could predict and do something about diabetes before it starts, wouldn't you have a great opportunity? And that's part of the passion that all of the scientists at Corey have. Well, then that leads me to osteoporosis. Now, that's something that normally is associated with aging bones adults but this is something that's a little bit alarming you're seeing a lot more kids coming into pediatricians offices with bone loss and even something called rickets which I'm sorry rickets went away that's an ancient term it went away in the 50s how is that making a comeback uh, explain so nutrition is not something that people understand a great deal about and we have a major center in our program at Cori to study nutrition. And one of the factors in nutrition relates to vitamin D. And if you watch the literature in the newspaper, you'll see enormous amount of publications on vitamin D having different roles. What we're seeing in children now, especially children with chronic illness, but not just that, is a marked increase in the deficiency of vitamin D and rickets associated with it. Okay, so in rickets Oakland, is is vitamin D deficiency. And, but wait a minute, it's in our milk, don't they supplement it? And, and, and vitamin D, don't you get that from sunshine? So the problem is that not enough people are outside. As a pediatrician, I mean, you're, weren't you telling parents, slather on the sunscreen, don't go in the sun too much, we're, we're worried about uh, melanomas? Yes, well, there are two ends of the spectrum, so you need to have enough sunlight and enough vitamin D and, and calcium to make your bones strong. We have been struggling with this problem in, in chronic disease and in, in treating children with cancer as well because some of the drugs that we use also have effects on, on uh, bone absorption and resorption. Um, but the, lately we've been focused much more on changes in the diet that aren't good for us and the more fast food that children eat and uh, the less more time in, in front of the television, for example, that they're spending, the less time they're out in the sun and eating good foods and, and maintaining healthy bodies. I, I know there are some parents out there who are gonna be terribly confused. They're saying, I thought I did the right thing. I put on the sunscreen, but now my child's not getting, absorbing enough vitamin D. Uh, what do you do? Well, one of the things they can do is talk to their pediatrician about having a vitamin D measurement made. Oh, you can measure. You can okay. easily measure it, so, and if there's deficiency, you can correct it with supplementing the diet with a, with some more vitamin D. Which is what milk that is fortified well, with vitamin D, or I think the problem is you would not get enough, uh, and people that have dark skin often are not able to tolerate milk. So, uh, all so right, you have to have a vitamin that has D in it. Okay, so supplement, and then also in terms of the sunshine, do you recommend parents maybe let the kids out for five ten minutes first and then put on the sunscreen? Uh, well, <laughs> the, these are ongoing conversations that even the dermatologists are discussing. It's not completely clear uh, how to address all of these different problems. I would still suggest that people do put sunscreen on their children, especially in the middle of the day. Um, but with regard to diet, there are no bad effects or ill effects for in making sure that children get all the nutrition that they need. Doctors, we have so many topics to cover and I know that you'll be back and as well as other doctors uh, in coming weeks. It's fascinating, um, but that unfortunately is all the time we have today. Uh, thank you both for joining us and for all your hard work and trying to um, well keep our children well and giving parents also a greater peace of mind. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.